Today I'm going to be taking a look at a Linux distribution that I've never taken a look at before. This distribution is called Cache OS. Cache OS is rather new. It is based on Arch Linux. And if I switch over to their website here, cacheos.org, you can see the blurb at the top of the screen. Blazingly fast and customizable Linux distribution. And if you read their website here, the front page on their webpage, they really talk about how customizable this distribution is. It offers a wide variety of desktop environments and window managers to choose from. And they really talk about the speed and the optimization of this particular Linux distribution. If I scroll down, you can see discover the benefits of Cache OS. And one of the things they talk about here is Cache OS features the optimized Linux Cache OS kernel utilizing the advanced BOR scheduler, that's B-O-R-E, for unparalleled performance. So, you know, they've, they've done some work, I guess, on the kernel. There's some kernel options available for us if we want to play with that stuff. They also talk about their web browser here. If I scroll up a little bit, get my head out of the way, they have their own web browser called the Cache Browser. Now, that is a fork of Firefox. So, essentially, you know, it's a rebranded Firefox. A lot of distributions do this because Firefox, of course, being free and open source software, anybody can fork it and, and you know, make, make it their own right all you got to do is rename it and you can do something new with firefox as a base another thing they talk about is the installation process apparently they offer two installers to fit your needs right they have a user-friendly gui version based on the calamaris installer which is what i'm going to use today and they also have a command line installer and that is really nice for the more power user. It's not necessarily you want to do a command line install just to prove that you're a power user, but sometimes you want to, you know, do some scripting. Maybe you want to have a, an installation script and you can't really use scripting with a graphical installer like Calamaris, but you can do that if the command line installer is available for you. So I'm going to go ahead and download one of their versions here. If I go to the download page, KDE Plasma is the first one that comes up. So I'm assuming that's going to be their flagship edition. So that's the one I'm going to download, but you can see you have GNOME, XFCE, and just those three here on the download page. But apparently, during the installation process, if I wanted to, I could install Cutefish, which I think is a dead project. I don't know much about Cutefish. I, I never tried it. Uh, people asked me to try Cutefish uh, uh, several months back, but by, by the time I got interested and maybe I'd take a look at it, it essentially, I think, is, is now dead. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't take a look at it because it wasn't around that long. Uh, i3 is available, Wayfire, LXQ, Openbox, Cinnamon. UKUI, I don't know anything about that, LXDE, Mate, and Budgie are all available. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the Plasma ISO and install this inside a virtual machine. So I've created a virtual machine here. I'm going to go ahead and choose the first option in the boot menu here, Cache OS Default. Interesting, I'm getting what look like some errors here as it's trying to boot. ZFS modules are not loaded. I'm assuming it's using ZFS as a default file system. It looks like it worked itself out there. Looks like it's booting fine now. Looked like some system D uh, start jobs were running there. It looked like it was trying to load some various kernel modules. So again, that's probably part of some of the optimized kernel stuff that they've added to Cache OS. And the live environment has booted up and we get a little welcome screen here. So this little hello program, it looks very reminiscent to the Manjaro hello program. I'm sure they probably just forked Manjaro's hello program and, and changed it to fit their needs. So let me go ahead and launch the installer. Calamaris install type. Do we want to do it offline or online? Well, I'm connected to the internet, so online would make sense. That way it needs to update anything. I get... The, the latest packages. And we got a terminal doing something in the background there, but we do have the Calamaris installer here. If I move my head out of the way, what's interesting is we have these tabs at the bottom. So typically the Calamaris installer has these tabs on the side, on the left hand side as you progress through the installer, but they've changed it to where these are at the bottom. Just a minor little aesthetic change there. Let me go ahead and choose my language. American English is the default and that is correct for me. So I'm just going to click next. Uh, they have chosen the central time zone in the U.S. for me. That is correct. Let me click next. English U.S. is my keyboard. So let me just click next. And then what do I want to do as far as do I want to erase the disk and give Cache OS the entire 
25 gig virtual drive of this virtual machine. That's what I'm going to do. But I could choose manual partitioning if I wanted to manually partition the drive myself. But I'm just going to give Cache OS the entire drive file system. It looks like it's going to default to XFS, which is fine. I, I typically go with the default file systems on these installations. So I'll leave that. But if you wanted to, you could choose ButterFS, Extend 4, F2FS, or ZFS. I'll choose XFS and then I'm just going to go ahead and click next. Now we have this interesting screen where we can actually, I guess, choose some desktop environments and window managers. So uh, I downloaded the KDE Plasma ISO, so I'm just going to go ahead and choose KDE Plasma. But uh, obviously we have a variety of things we could choose here if we wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and click next and then the additional packages. So we have base Deville and common packages. And it says recommended, don't change this unless you know what you're doing. So base develops as common packages, that's probably you know standard like build essentials and things that are typically part of a base installation of every Linux distribution. We have Cache OS kernels. If I tick that on, I wonder what it would do. It says selection of different Cache OS kernels. I'm just going to go with their defaults, but that's interesting that that is there. NVIDIA drivers, I am in a virtual machine, so I don't need to play with this. But those of you that are on, on physical hardware, many of you guys will have NVIDIA cards. So make sure to tick that on if you are an NVIDIA user. And then the desktops, I'm just going to go with KDE for now. I'm going to click next. My username will be DT on this machine. Uh, Cache OS x86-64 is the host name that they uh, default to. I'll just leave that. And then we need to create a password for the DT user. So let's create a strong and complicated password. And then repeat the strong and complicated password. And then log in automatically without asking for a password. No, leave that ticked off. For privacy reasons, you should always enter a password to get into a computer. And then use the same password for the administrator account. I will leave that ticked on. So my sudo password and DT's password will be the same password. So I'm going to click next. And I cannot click next because it says my password is too short. So unfortunately, I can't use my standard password. This is one of the problems with some of these distributions is they're very unfriendly, especially for virtual machine installs. I don't need to create some weird, complicated password that I'm never going to remember for testing stuff out in a virtual machine. Just let me use the password I want to use. So I really hate when they do this. I wonder if it would let me do this password here. It will. And now, yeah, I can proceed. We get a summary, uh, location and time zone all look good. Keyboard's good. Partition scheme looks good. I'm just going to click the install button and it says install now and away we go. One thing I briefly want to point out is during the installation, one of the slideshows here talks about the Cache OS kernels. And apparently there is a list of about six extra kernels to choose from that are available in the Cache OS repos. So uh, can I get back to that screen? Let me click on the slideshow. There it is. You can see we have Cache uh, OS Borth. So that's for the Bore scheduler, Cache OS CFS. That is the default CFS scheduler, Cache OS Hardened. Cache OS TT, that's the task type scheduler, Cache OS BMQ for the BMQ scheduler, and Cache OS PDS for the PDS scheduler kernel. So lots of kernel options for those that need it. For me, I'm just going to go with whatever kernel they default to. And the installation has completed. So in the Calamaris installer to complete installation, you need to tick on this box here that says restart now and then click done and it should automatically reboot the machine for you. If you're doing this on physical hardware, doing the reboot process, you need to unplug your USB stick that you're installing from. So let me go ahead and reboot. And we've come to our login manager. Since I installed Plasma, we're going to use the SDM login manager, which is typically the default login manager for KDE Plasma. It looks like it's going to default to Plasma using Wayland. Since I'm in a virtual machine, uh, Xorg is going to work a lot better. So I'm going to choose Plasma X11. I do notice SDM is just using like a default fallback theme. So it's not really themed in any way, which is kind of shocking because their desktop environment looked like it was very heavily custom and themed. I'm surprised they didn't theme SDDM. Let me go ahead and log in with my super secure password if I can remember it. 
And we've logged into our KDE Plasma desktop environment. I will say on first impression, it is a really attractive desktop environment. I, uh, I really appreciate the fact that they've tried to theme the panel in such a way it almost resembles Windows 11. You have your start uh, button here, your menu essentially over here on the far left, but your taskbar is centered, kind of like the default centering of the taskbar on Windows 11. Then of course we have the sys tray and the clock on the right hand side. By default we get our welcome screen when we first log in. We could actually toggle that to not launch on startup and I probably will toggle that to never show again but for right now while it's open documentation you have a readme if you wanted to go ahead and read a little bit more about Cache OS release information about this version of Cache OS, a link to their wiki, a link to their forms, software, you can see how to get involved with the project, apps and tweaks. Let's click that. And you can see some of the tweaks in include profile sync daemon enable, so we can enable that if we want Bluetooth enabled, it's on by default, we could toggle that off if we didn't want Bluetooth. App Armor uh, is disabled by default, but you could toggle it on if you wanted to. Of course, you would have to give it your sudo password. Anytime you make changes to the system, installing software, removing software, you always have to enter a sudo password. They also have a button for a system update. So just a quick way probably to do a Pac-Man SYU, just a graphical way, is to click that button and it opens a terminal. And assuming I can remember my super secure password, Yes, you're just going to run a Pac-Man SYU for you. There's nothing to do because we just installed. They have a button for reinstall all packages. That's interesting. They have a refresh key rings button as well. That's interesting. Uh, that's a, actually a nice touch to have on Arch Linux based distributions because sometimes you do need to refresh the Arch Linux key rings. And if you don't know the commands for it, because it's something you don't have to do that often, typically you got to go look for the command in a wiki, right? <laughs> so I often have to go and, and look for a lot of these commands, like the command to remove orphaned packages is something that's not something you'll enter very often and it's not a, a obvious command like it's kind of a convoluted lengthy command with a lot of flags so having a graphical way to do some of this stuff you got a button for ranking the mirrors yeah this is this is nice i like this going back to the main welcome page here install apps i'm assuming would uh give us yeah like some extra probably uh especially a lot of proprietary software maybe that's not easily available in the repos but they do have some free and open source stuff here brave on google chromium chromium actually these are all open source except opera is a proprietary browser so you got some extra browsers email clients as well office suites got LibreOffice, wps only office and microsoft 365 uh, yeah everyone wants 365 on their linux system now <laughs> then text editors what do we have gedit uh micro and zed Micro is already installed. That's nice. I love the Micro text editor. It's probably my favorite uh, terminal-based text editor that's not Vim. All right, Vim is definitely superior, but Micro is a really nice touch. It's kind of like Nano on steroids. I, I really like Micro. For a graphical text editor, Gedit and Zed both are pretty good. If I scroll down a little bit, let's get into uh, video and movies. So you've got Cody, Parole, SM Player, Totem, VLC, X Player for audio, some of the options, Audacious, Clementine, Dead Beef, which is my favorite, uh, Lollipop, and Rhythm Box are all here as well. I'm going to go ahead and close out the welcome screen. So let me go ahead and get into the menu system. And if I go into development, we have several things here. Most of it is Qt related, KDE Plasma being a Qt based desktop environment. It makes sense why all of this stuff is here. But some other programs that, you know, a typical desktop computer user might have a use for, Micro, the text editor, Kate is also here, uh, a text editor, and that's one of KDE's default applications. Meld is also here, that's for viewing diffs. Under the graphics category, we have GwenView, which is KDE's image viewer. Under Internet, I want to take a look at the Cache browser. Let's see what this is all about. And it's taking a minute to load, but Firefox typically takes a little bit of time to load. And this is in a virtual machine. I only gave this virtual machine 6 gigs of RAM. I gave it two threads of my 24-thread CPU. It's interesting that one of the default tabs that open is darkreader.org. So this is... Uh, like a dark reader plugin. I don't know too much about it, but that's interesting that they're pushing that. Canvas Blocker <laughs> is also here. I'm assuming these are plugins that are already enabled in Cache Browser and having those default tabs open up just to let you know, hey, those are there. Matter of fact, let me go into the menu system here. 
if I go to add-ons and themes, yeah, you can see they've already got Canvas Blocker and Dark Reader both installed and enabled. They also have uBlock Origin installed and enabled. So that is the Cache browser. I, I do like the theme. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the colors. I, I like the cute theme, and, and I really like everything about their desktop. I like the wallpaper as well. Very sexy. And let's get back into the menu under Internet. Other than the Cache browser, nothing else here really to mention. The Avahi server, KDE Connect. KDE Connect is a, a nice piece of software that allows you to sync your mobile device with your desktop as well. So that's nice. We have a multimedia category. Not much here. Pulse audio volume control. Uh, under settings, we have our firewall configuration, which if I click on it, trying to connect to firewall D, we have to enter a sudo password. I'm not going to play with any of this, but that is your firewall there. Under settings, we also have pulse audio volume control again, Qt5 settings, so that is configuring Qt. Uh, I'm assuming, yeah, changing themes, fonts, icon themes, yada, yada, yada. Let me go ahead and close out of that. And really, not much else. The system stuff, Alacrity is the default terminal. That is very nice. I'm glad they shipped a, a nice terminal. Although KDE's Dolphin is not bad, I do think Alacrity is kind of like the, the standard these days. <laughs> like it, it is such a good terminal. There's really nothing bad to say about the Alacrity terminal. We have BTOP, which is a system monitor. That's interesting. It's just kind of a fancy graphical system monitor. But a lot of times, I mean, HTOP does the trick. I mean, it gives you all the information. BTOP is just, I guess, a sexier way to display that information. We have our Hello program, the kernel manager as well, if we want to play around with some of those extra kernels that are available in the repo. Dolphin is our file manager, of course, being a Plasma desktop. I do love the icon set, and I do love the cute theme because it has this uh, translucent uh, bookmark uh, sidebar here. That is really cool. Yeah, I, I kind of dig that. That's, that's not bad. Also under system, we have the fish shell, which is probably just the default shell. Yeah, so this is console and fish shell launches. I'm assuming Alacrity was also defaulting to the fish shell, but I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let's see if it tells me here in the NeoFetch. Yeah, fish 3.6.0. So it does uh, default your user's shell to fish. I'm assuming the default system shell would probably be bash. I do echo shell. You can see right now of course we're the dt user his default shell is slash bin slash fish now if i wanted to see what the default system shell is uh, there is actually a file on every linux system let me make this full screen let's see can i zoom in let me find the default key binding to zoom in uh, the file is slash etsy slash pass wd and of course let's go ahead and just view that with vim assuming Vim is installed. And let's go ahead and look for the root user. The root user is the very first user. You can see his default shell, slash bin, slash bash. So that's the default system shell is bash. The default user shell is going to be fish. Let me go ahead and exit out of alacrity. Getting back into the system category, let's see if there's anything else to note. No, standard stuff. Octopi is here for a graphical uh, software center. Octopi is really nice. It's kind of like the old uh, Debian synaptic package manager that Debian and Debian based distributions typically install. It's very, very similar. Octopi is. It's, it's kind of like a, a version of synaptic itself designed for, you know, being a front end to Pac-Man instead of apt. So really cool program, Octopi. We have a utilities category and not much here. We have Arc, which is our archiving tool for uh, zip, unzip, and things like that. An emoji selector, in case you need it, right? Kate and Kwrite, so both text editors, uh, part of the KDE suite of applications. Spectacle is our screenshot utility. And Vim is a, a text editor. Vim is installed out of the box, which is a nice touch. In the taskbar at the center, we do have some pinned applications. We have system settings. We have discover, the cache browser, and the Dolphin File Manager, and that's it. Just four items pinned. I probably would go ahead uh, and pin some other important things, like obviously I'm in a terminal all the time. I'd probably want Alacrity pinned down here. I wonder how easy that would be if I search for Alacrity. Could I just drag it down here? Because I really need Alacrity. Yep, that does work. Let me escape out of the menu. Now let me right click on the desktop and let me configure desktop and wallpaper. Let's see what kind of wallpapers they are using out of the box. See if they have their own like custom wallpaper pack here. Got some abstract wallpapers. 
Most of these are really nice because they're minimal, not a lot of colors, uh, not terribly busy. Yeah, not bad. I kind of like the wallpapers. It's mostly abstract art, although here's one that's uh, more of an anime kind of thing. I don't know what's going on with this. It's called Pink Lady. That's interesting. Splash. Um, yeah, that's the splash screen when it first booted up. Yeah, that's kind of cool, too. Yeah, the wallpapers. They're okay. I, I, I wouldn't say this is my favorite uh, group of wallpapers ever, but they're not bad. Let me get back to one of the more blue wallpapers. Actually, let me try the uh, more purplish color. Yeah, that's probably a nicer contrast there. That way everything isn't all the same kind of bluish, neon greenish color. Now let me open a terminal again. Let me just click on my Alacrity terminal down here and zoom way in again. Clear the screen here. Let's do a uname-r. Let's see what kernel we're using. We're using uh, kernel 6.1.12-cache OS. So that's a generic kernel. That's not one of the custom uh, kernels. They've got six different custom kernels with different schedulers enabled. Now let's see how many packages are installed out of the box. I didn't really install any extra packages. So just a base install with KDE Plasma. Do a pacman capital q lowercase q and all the packages installed will spit out on their own line, right? The output is each package on its own line. So if I up arrow and pipe that into the WC program, the word count program, WC space dash L for a line count rather than a word count, 955 lines were in that output. And that means there's 955 packages installed out of the box with Cache OS KDE Plasma. That's not a lot of programs. And you could kind of tell when I went through the menu system, there wasn't much there, especially in some places where I, I assumed there would be some stuff. There's nothing installed for multimedia, right? There's no music player. There's no video player installed, right? So you need to go install those, what I would consider very important packages um, under internet. I mean, we had the browser. We didn't really have an email client, which most people don't need a desktop email client. There's no IRC uh, client either, which might be important if you need support for your Linux distribution. There's really nothing else to speak of in that menu system. It's a really bare bones system, which I kind of like. I, I like picking my own programs uh, rather than having a, a, a full suite of applications uh, served to me. So there you have it. That's Cache OS. That's a very quick and cursory look. My very first time actually taking a look at Cache OS was right here on camera with you and I quite like it it's a, a standard Arch Linux based distribution but it does come with a bunch of different desktop environments and window managers to choose from some of them have their own ISOs you had three different ISOs uh, KDE Plasma GNOME and XFCE I thought it was themed rather well I love some of the default applications the Alacrity Terminal the fish shell, you know, and then it's got all these optimized kernels which may be good for some of you that need uh, you know better speed and, and performance out of your kernel for various tasks maybe like gaming i do I, I find this linux distribution rather appealing i think it's a nice addition to a, a very crowded space because there's so many linux distributions out there and there's so many arch linux based distributions out there people often ask oh do we really need another one and well i think we do need another one if they do it right and cache os seems to be doing it right now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe James, Maxim, Matt, Mimit Mitchell, Paul, Royal, Wes, Armor Dragon, Bash Potato, Chuck, Commander Angry, George, Lee, Methos, Nate, Erjan, Paul, Peace, Arsham, Fordor, Polytech, Realities, Less Red Prophet, Roland, Tools, Devlin, Willie. <laughs> I almost messed that up, but I, I, yeah, I probably should re-record that. I'm not going to do it. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Cache OS would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace. Alacrity, Fish, and Vim all installed out of the box. It's perfect.